Hello and welcome to Geek's Kingdom. So the Fallen Kingdom trailers and sneak peeks have been filled with awesome clips. One of my favorites has been seeing the Mosasaur in the open waters. However, that brings up the topic of today's video. How does the Mosasaur escape? So seeing the Mosasaur in the open water is definitely one of my favorite scenes so far from all the teaser trailers. And that's honestly kind of hard to say simply because we've seen so many awesome teasers and looks into the Fallen Kingdom movie. However, I can't 100% explain why I like that scene so much, but I think it does go back to reading the Jurassic Park novel and how it kind of opens on finding what turns out to be dinosaur remains on the mainland and I've always thought that it's kind of a fascinating topic and how hard li life is to get contained. Uh, one like kind of real world comparison to that is pythons in Florida which have kind of taken over. I think they've started to get the situation under control but pythons were a pet that was released into the wild and they were a very bad invasive species and were killing alligators as well as other natural wildlife in florida so kind of getting glimpses into that like imagine portions of like jungles and rainforests being like no go zones because there's like raptor populations in them i've always personally thought that was kind of fascinating but i am not also at the same time not a huge fan of the t-rex scene in the lost world at the end uh, I kind of think it's a little bit tacked on. Uh, I do think it's good overall, but I'm not a huge fan of it. I think there's a lot of other aspects of that movie that are a lot better. So it's definitely not my favorite part of The Lost World. But I do think the Mosasaur scene is very cool. And it brings up the strong question of how the Mosasaur escapes from kind of its landlocked lagoon uh, to the open waters. So after watching this scene, I had a lot of thoughts in my head on exactly how the Mosasaur escapes and makes it to the open water. So I headed over to the Jurassic Park subreddit and saw a lot of discussion going on about this topic. So some of the theories were kind of crazy and out there, but I took some of the most plausible explanations and made it the community poll that you're seeing above and had a lot of interesting you know, feedback from that poll. Of course, the most popular choice was that the Mosasaur escaped to the underwater observatory and the reason why this is probably the most popular is simply because it was on the official Jurassic World website and it was like a hint on the, the map. But the big question here and what I want to talk about in today's video is whether that hint was removed from the map simply because it was a massive spoiler or was it removed because it didn't line up with the film's canon. So it does seem that nearly half the people agree that the official canon reason for the, how the Mosasaur escapes will be through the destroyed and flooded underwater observatory. However, the biggest issue that I personally have with this theory becoming the official canon is the fact that it seems like a fairly simple engineering oversight that to have a passageway large enough for the Mosasaur to fit through uh, if it was flooded that it connects not only to the Mosasaur's lagoon but also to some source of open water whether that be the river or the open ocean itself so it just seems like a massive you know design oversight that wouldn't make a lot of sense simply as a fail safe you know if it ever did get flooded however it wouldn't be the first time that the engineers behind Jurassic Park and Jurassic World had the illusion of control where it wasn't really there and would possibly cocky with how they designed the park's infrastructure. So that leads to the second most popular theory on how the Mosasaur reaches the open water and that is it escapes somehow during the capture and relocation phase of the movie. So I could see this being a somewhat plausible explanation. For example, if the Mosasaur was captured and was being transported via semi, for example, in a carrying tank, and that tank needed to be transferred from the semi at the docks to the cargo ship, and the volcano happened to erupt at the same time, then that could be a pretty plausible explanation for how the Mosasaur does reach the open water. But the reason why I don't personally think this will be the official movie canon is because of the massive undertaking and the large challenge that would be imposed on actually capturing the Mosasaur and actually transporting it to the mainland or wherever it was intended to go to. Simply due to the size of this aquatic beast, I could picture that being a very challenging task and it would make capturing the T-Rex 
look like a walk in the park. Um, so that's why I don't really think this theory will be the official movie canon. So my personal favorite theory is the fact that Maserati had bred more than one Mosasaur. And the reason why I think this makes so much sense is simply from a business point of view, the feeding show seems to be a pretty key focal point for the Jurassic World Park. And if something did happen to the Mosasaur due to disease or age or just some sickness in, in some way, you wouldn't want to have such a key focal point for your park, such a key showpiece to be completely shut down for six months or a year as you bred the star's replacement and grew it up to size. So it makes a lot of business sense to have a replacement juvenile that was, you know, possibly in a different holding tank that was closer to the open water. And the reason why I think this theory has a lot of credence is because these are not 100% copies of their prehistoric counterparts. And by not having full genomes and having splices of other creatures to have a creature, you know, become viable, it's very likely that diseases or shortened life expectancies were common with the dinosaurs of the Jurassic World Park. So having a backup, you know, bred to take place if something ever did happen to the main star of the show makes a ton of business sense. So I do think that it could be a theory that has a lot of weight to it, but I personally don't expect to see it in the film. Before I wrap things up, I do want to show this short clip from the international trailer that shows the sub approaching an underwater gate that is opening. And this could possibly be an explanation for how the Mosasaur escapes to the open ocean that actually isn't on my community poll. Uh, but we really don't have any insight into where on the park this gate, underwater gate, is. Uh, it could simply be in the lagoon. It could be a smaller holding pen uh, where they, you know, lead the Mosasaur in possibly by having food there uh, when they need to work on the larger enclosure, such as fixing something or possibly even just cleaning it. And they don't want to be out there with the Mosasaur, of course. So they might have a smaller holding pen within the larger lagoon um, but we really don't have any insight to it but it is kind of an interesting clip and it's interesting why they show, decided to show that and the reason that it's in the teaser could simply be that is how the mosasaur does reach the open water so now that we've talked about some of the theories into how the mosasaur escapes i would love to hear your own theories so leave those in the comments below or possibly click on the straw poll link in the description to vote on this poll as it'd be interesting to see how the results change over time as we approach the release of fallen kingdom so thanks for watching guys if you did like this video and you found it interesting and thought-provoking and you got you thinking about your own little theories give it a big like i greatly appreciate that guys and also make sure you hit that subscribe button to stay tuned for more great content from geek kingdom once again guys thanks for watching and until next time zach out